you know, I do feel that 80s cinema is, along with the 50s, the, the worst era in Hollywood history. Well, Matched I, only by now. Well, I, <laughs> Matched only by the current era. Uh, um. It's interesting how such an off-the-cuff remark can ignite such strong reactions across the board. The media love to throw out these type of headlines, and let's not pretend, YouTubers love to create videos with titles like this because it's instantly divisive. It either resonates with you or it doesn't. And because it's such a broad statement, it allows for people to smuggle in their favourite topic of choice and passionately argue about that in the comments section instead. Depending on your preference, it's either movie expert demonstrates his expertise by saying something true, or movie expert demonstrates he's now out of touch by saying something false. Now the easy thing to do is to just pick a side and play to them, passionately reinforcing how right I am and how my subjective opinion is so overwhelmingly right that it crosses over to basically being objectively true. I can cherry pick embarrassing tweets or biased articles to bolster my argument and really make myself sound good, but for fun, let's do the opposite. I'll lay out my own opinions and back them up as best I can at this moment in time, and then in the second half, deconstruct my own arguments, and steel man the other side. And then we'll see where we are at the end of the video. More than likely, you won't change your opinion, and neither will I, as it's about how we feel, not what's factually right or wrong. But maybe we deepen our understanding of what's going on in the world of cinema these days. So is Tarantino right? Are we experiencing the worst era of movies? You know your own answer, but for me, that emotionally resonates as true, because what I value most in cinema is originality. I want new stories, new twists, new auteurs, new movie stars creating iconic roles. That way our generation can say, look, here are the movies that say something about the world and who we were at this point in time. So my bias is clear. I even made a video about why I thought the 90s was the golden era for original movies and how the Chinese box office is influencing Hollywood. Like many of you, I have treasured memories of physically going to the movie theatre and seeing something totally new. It could have been a drama, a thriller, a blockbuster, a romantic comedy, an animation, a horror movie, or something weird and experimental. And seeing such a wide range of stories being told in different ways made me fall in love with movies, because they seemed like they were a beacon of creativity, a place where anything could be explored. But maybe this was just an innocent byproduct of the times, as once the internet came along, the game changed. Rather than movies being a place for free expression that could explore important topics for us, now we all get the opportunity to throw in our two cents on social media. Just feeling a certain way about a particular topic is no longer enough. Now we want to engage with it directly, by joining a never-ending collective game of tug-of-war on every single issue. And because every action has a reaction, to avoid this social media backlash, modern movies feel neutered and stripped of their edginess or personality. And if the characters or themes do ever need to speak to a political cause, they land in a very predictable, safe, politically correct position. So that any backlash they do get doesn't reflect poorly on the studio. It's as if the ethos of cinema has changed from speaking on behalf of the people to it's better to say almost nothing of significance than to accidentally say the wrong thing. And now that there's so much content out there competing for our attention, including content creators who are willing to say anything, and streaming services providing round-the-clock home entertainment, physically going to the cinema has become a tedious extra step and additional expense. So as box office numbers dwindle, studios are incentivized to only make movies that will guarantee bums in seats, and that means it needs to be something people feel should be experienced on the big screen, which usually means a high-budget CGI sensation. And if they're going to invest all that money, then it needs to play to a global audience, which has its own implications. With this whole international audience, the more, you know, the, the, the simpler the story, the more that it can kind of play, the, the, the less language matters, and so the more kind of broad appeal and the more it can play in, in all over the world. So nowadays the few movies that do make it to the cinema need to have such broad international appeal to even get greenlit, that they wind up generic good versus bad stories that anyone can understand. And while this could have been an interesting opportunity for new writers and directors to create brand new original blockbuster ideas, lots of attempts at original stories bombed at the box office, so it's safer to just go with what's tried and true, 
superheroes with a built-in audience that will embrace them just recasting Spider-Man for the 17th time, or for a novelty factor, place two superheroes from different stories on screen together. And if they run out of ideas entirely, screw it, just throw them all on screen at the same time. It used to be that some of the highest grossing movies of the year weren't blockbusters. If you look at the worldwide box office in 1999, the top 10 highest grossing movies included originals like The Sixth Sense, Notting Hill, American Beauty, The Green Mile, and The Blair Witch Project. Fast forward to 2022 and the top 10 highest grossing movies are all sequels, reboots, and usually based on comic books or even video games. And that's before Avatar even comes out. This didn't happen overnight. Over the past 20 years, fewer and fewer of the highest grossing movies are original. Now you may think, why fetishize originality so much? What difference does it really make, whether a story's been told before or not? It doesn't necessarily say anything about its quality. Well, by the industry's own standards, there's now a divide between award movies and movies that the general audience actually go and see. Back in 1999, three out of the top five original highest grossing movies were nominated for multiple Oscars. So there was a crossover between what people actually watched and what was deemed to possess high creative quality. But that's not the case anymore. On top of that, without original movies being made and attracting an audience, then you'll inevitably run out of things to remake or reboot. Original movies are what emotionally attach us to new creative forces that can then be used to promote future projects, such as writers, directors, and actors. Without Reservoir Dogs, we wouldn't have Tarantino. Without Mean Streets or Taxi Driver, we don't have Scorsese. Without The Blair Witch Project, we wouldn't have the found footage genre. Now you may think that it's run its course or wasn't that good, but it's through this trial and error process that we find new ways of telling stories that audiences actively want to see. Other decades have left behind an iconic legacy. The 1970s had Star Wars, Jaws, The Godfather, The Exorcist, Halloween, Rocky, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It cemented the blossoming careers of George Lucas, Ridley Scott, Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, Sylvester Stallone, Francis Ford Coppola, Jack Nicholson. The 1990s had Fargo, Jurassic Park, Toy Story, Pulp Fiction, The Matrix, The Lion King, Home Alone, The Shawshank Redemption, Fight Club, among so many more. Whereas now it feels like cinema is feasting off the decomposing carcasses of those past generations. We're still making Jurassic World movies, Toy Story spin-offs, Creed movies based on Rocky movies, Halloween reboots and sequels, Star Wars movies and spin-offs of spin-offs, The Lion King remake, alongside every other live-action remake they're pumping out. So now when you go to the cinema, you don't wonder what they have in store for you. You very much know what you're getting, and are basically just stamping your ticket to go on the same theme park ride one more time. So when someone like Tarantino says this is the worst era for movies, of course it resonates as true. That's just the reality we live in, and anyone who even tries to argue against it is revealing themselves to be a complete and total idiot. Now if you agree with everything I said, then this is going to hurt your ears, and it will even sting me as it comes out of my own mouth. But it's important to acknowledge, back when you first fell in love with movies, you were probably coming of age, and as your brain developed into an adult, this happened to coincide with the deepening of your understanding of cinema. So the movies that spoke to you may have only resonated so strongly because they were literally the first time you ever felt those feelings or considered those concepts. For example, one of these rebellious characters likely resonates with you more than the others, depending on what your outlook was at the time that you saw it. Art is just as much about the viewer as the artist, as our own experiences guide our interpretation and the level of meaning we ascribe to it. This is why some stories resonate with us more than others, or why we don't really get certain movies until we mature further and have the life experience to inform our understanding. So we'll always have a soft spot for the excellent movies that were coming out at the same time that we were falling in love with cinema. Because as we learned more about what the craft of good storytelling involved, just like the bader mainhoff phenomenon, we now begin to see it everywhere. Everyone wants to believe that they're living through uniquely innovative times. Imagine you were back in 1999, you'd just seen The Sixth Sense for the first time, and you thought, wow, what a twist. That was the best scary movie I've ever seen. There's no way M. Night Shyamalan could screw this up from here. And then someone older said, no, movies today aren't as good as they used to be. The twist in Hitchcock's Psycho was far superior. They don't make movies like that anymore. You'd probably think they're being overly nostalgic, and that those movies, sure, were great for the time they were made, but they're a bit dated now. So when we say things like, this is the worst era of movies ever made, 
we're essentially spitting in the face of the next generation of potential filmmakers and film fans who are falling in love with cinema in their own personal way. Now the obvious response to that is yes, but that's because they're just feeding the corporate machine who are repackaging the same ideas again and again. Sure, but the point I'm making isn't about the art itself, it's about you and why you feel certain ways about certain things, and why this next generation will also feel a certain way too. So when you disrupt their discovery and enjoyment of something, of course they're going to disagree with you. To them, they feel as if there's great stuff getting made all the time, as they're resonating with it and learning from it in the same way you did. And the movies you adore, and this may sting, aren't as perfect as you feel they are. You may think that's what you love about them, but others see those imperfections as just imperfections. It's also completely cheating to cherry pick the best movies from the past and compare them to an average movie coming out today. It also takes time for a movie to build up a legacy. For instance, The Shawshank Redemption and Fight Club were both financial flops when they originally came out, but over time they developed a huge following, so some of the best movies of today could currently be flying under the radar. The good thing about being in a bad era of Hollywood cinema is the ones that don't conform, the ones that stand out from the pack. And they those are bigger. Yeah, and those movies that stand out from the pack, I literally call them archives classics. Even Tarantino acknowledges that there are great movies being made in this current era. The problem is that they're often drowned out by blockbusters at the box office and surrounded by so many bad or average movies on streaming services. But by its very nature, when we look back at an era of movies, we only really watch or remember the cream of the crop that had the most cultural impact. We don't watch the forgotten drama that didn't get nominated for any awards, or the subpar sci-fi movie that flopped at the box office. Let's take some of the better movies from the past 10 years that aren't superhero movies, and see if they look like they could stand the test of time for their own unique qualities. Parasite, The Wolf of Wall Street, The Revenant, Whiplash, Her, Boyhood, in Thriller we have Gone Girl, Nightcrawler, in Sci-Fi we have Nolan's Tenet and Interstellar, as well as Ex Machina, in Horror we have Jordan Peele's Get Out, as well as Ari Aster's Midsummer and Hereditary. There are many more, but as you can see, when you just focus on the more unique movies of any decade, then it can look quite strong. It's very hard to compare new movies with classics that have decades of cultural commentary backing them up. After you've heard one is the best so many times, it builds up a certain reputation that's impossible to overcome. But movies have changed, and let's be honest, the visual effects, sound design, and cinematography have vastly improved. If Hereditary came out back in the 70s, who's to say it wouldn't be just as, if not more, famous than The Exorcist? We just don't really know what this current era looks like until it's long past. Now you may look at this list and just think, meh, this only further proves my point, they really don't make great movies like they used to. Back then was undeniably the best time for quality content being made. But now let's see how you would react to this statement. This is the worst era of television ever. Now if you have any semblance of taste, you likely react negatively to that opinion, potentially even recoiling in horror, as it's simply not true. The entertainment landscape changed because of the internet. Once you no longer needed to go to the cinema because you had a home entertainment system with round-the-clock access to everything, your habits were going to change, and thus the movie business was going to have to change too. Instead of going to see an excellent two-hour drama in the cinema every few months, you're just going to have to settle for an excellent ten-hour drama on television several times a year. Now don't get me wrong, there's still so much television being produced that the majority of it is mediocre. But on average, we all intuitively feel that TV's baseline standards are only getting higher year after year. This proves that filmmakers, writers, and directors still know how to tell a compelling story. It's just that now you more than likely won't go to see it in the cinema unless you have a real reason to. And there is another potential factor at play here. Perhaps movies today are, on average, slightly better than they used to be. Sure, the current best may not eclipse the greatest of all time, but the average movie today is probably better than the average movie 25 years ago. But because we all have access to a library of all of the greatest movies ever made, we've become far more film literate, and therefore can't enjoy movies as easily as we used to. If anything, the problem could be that we're spoiled for choice these days. We can watch anything we want, whenever we want. We're just inundated with so many options that we have to sift through a lot of crap to get to something great. 
So to say it's the worst era for movies is true in some respects, and false in others. Really what we can say is that the best movies today aren't always as good as the best movies ever made, or the best shows currently on TV. And the most popular movies of this era are mostly unoriginal blockbusters that don't creatively inspire us the way old blockbusters used to. So a statement like this does capture how we genuinely feel, but in a very incomplete way. Yes, I miss how cinema used to be, the number of original movies being released, and the cultural impact they had. But if you teleported me back to then, with the knowledge I have now, I'd miss the access I have to incredible TV series and online content that currently commands the cultural conversation. But if we truly want to have the best of both worlds, then we need to alter our behaviour. We didn't end up here by accident. The internet changed things, streaming services changed things. It made our access to entertainment seamless and often free. But if you love original cinema, then look up your favourite original filmmaker's next movie and pay to go see it. Invite friends, if you can afford it, see it twice, and if you enjoy it, talk about it and recommend it to others. Just like if a tree falls in the woods with no one around to hear it, if a great movie is released and no one bothers to see it or talk about it, then it can't leave behind a cultural impact. The easy thing to do is sit back and complain, but we're a part of this. Movie studios and content creators are not that different. They respond to incentives and what their audience seems to want to see. Not what they claim they want to see, but what the cold hard numbers tell them they want to see. So whenever you go to the movie theatre, you're directly communicating with the studio and voting for more. And this year, this is what was voted for. Don't like it? Then show up and vote. A surprising statistic you may not know is that only half the movies released by studios actually make a profit. So if you don't appreciate the current movies coming out of Hollywood, actively stop buying tickets for reboots, remakes and sequels, and actively start buying tickets to the more original, risky or high quality movies coming out. Even if they didn't get the best reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, even if they're not always aligned with your pinpoint precise taste. Once there's an upward trend in original movies making a profit, then financiers are actually incentivized to give more risky creative projects a shot. This is how we all start steering the industry back in the direction we want it to go. Otherwise we're all just screaming into the void, hoping someone else will do it for us. So enough of my rambling, what do you think? Is Tarantino right? Is this the worst era of movies ever? If so, why? And if not, when do you think was? If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really does make a difference to how much content I can pump out. Or if you can't afford that, then simply like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to help the algorithm do its thing.